say a catch of a million naira in this case was given to the strategy and um the falling knife strategy was applied to to that and um this is like the um the chart but um but this would not be the only thing i would be trying um i would also try um some other suggestions from the from the document sent by you say yeah so you you you're using a third party um an API backtesting to write um backtesting API to write. Yes, yes, backtesting.py, backtesting.py, and that was what was uh, used. Okay. Uh. Okay. And um uh, well what 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 do you want to get from this backtesting? What what's your next step up regarding this? Okay, so basically the, the idea was to compare different um thresholds. That was like the idea. The, the idea was to compare different thresholds, but um I I've not really been able to implement the other threshold and backtest that as well. So um if you observe, um let me try to zoom this up close. Yeah, um, if you um, okay, so if you yeah. observe you would see BT1, you, you see BT1. So the, there's a BT1 and there's a BT2. Um, so there is so this is the BT2, although I have not really been able to um edit this the strategy for BT2. So this is BT2, but BT2 okay. for now, yeah. So BT2 for now is still making use of the idea of BT1, but the idea was to compare different thresholds. That was uh -huh. the idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay, so the first thing that I would like to say is that uh what i explained in the document uh that is what lopez de Prado says um back testing is not a research tool okay so okay. it is actually uh just like uh what what you whenever you want to res do research you should actually do something like for example feature importance okay okay Okay. So before you backtest an idea, you need to first uh, do feature importance. And that's like one of the first steps you you should do before I implement a back uh, a strategy backtesting. Okay. Okay. And you have many options. You can do it with historical data. Or you can you you can create uh synthetic data. Okay. Okay. And even though I'm saying this, uh many people do what uh you are doing, which is just uh go just ahead with the back testing procedure, you know. Uh however, uh if you want to follow what is the common thing that practitioners do uh, in, in 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 finance in, in quantitative finance in algorithmic trading you should follow what lopez de prado lopez de prado does you know in his book so that is uh there are many things there are many ways to do um to check for feature importance that could you can use also casual machine learning for example but the the most uh close thing to do is to do feature importance with any machine learning uh, algorithm that can be used and you have for feature importance something called mda or mdi which can be useful to detect which features are important to, to be used for before you train a study, you backtest a study. So in, in, in case you have favorable results here, uh, you can still check for feature importance, see if there are many other features that can be used also, as you said, you have do you have to do some data preprocessing, which is uh, maybe a standardization or normalization. That depends on the type of variable you have. If it is normal, if it follows a follow a normal distribution or not. 
So in the document that I share, there are many things that you can implement before you uh, backtest a study. And for that, you need to check the reference, the references that, that I shared uh, for each subtopic that I that I wrote there in the in the document. So throughout the week, uh, I would love to, to to have questions regarding that document, and in, uh, I will be really happy to to answer any questions you would like to ask. Okay, thank you. So th the other thing is that uh, as you are using thresholds, you mean for example five percent or ten percent, uh, a negative return. A negative return of five or ten percent. As I told you, that creates like um, in case you are you're going to use a machine learning algorithm, that will create like um, an imbalance. Like, yes, an imbalance uh, prediction feature. So yeah. you have to be careful regarding that. Maybe you will need to create synthetic data in order to to circumvent that problem. In case you will not use machine learning there, then you can maybe avoid talking about uh, imbalance, but uh, an imbalance data due to the prediction feature. But uh, well, that depends on the on the orientation that you would like to have for your study for your project. You know, in case you want to use machine learning or you just want to use technical indicators. That depends on what's what will be your focus on this project. What you want to focus on this project. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, could you please show me how how do you create the signal here? So this okay. is. So for for the signal. Um, yeah. So this was how the signal was created. So, uh, so if the return is is less than five percent, okay. So less than this threshold, then it will be one. Okay, cool. Now, um, so did you shift the signal? Um, I didn't shift the signal. I didn't shift the signal because you need to be aware of look ahead bias. So it's important to to not uh, commit that uh, bias. You know, be careful about that. Okay. So it, when you a... when when you commute when you compute the strategy returns. You should shift the signal, you know, because as I'm seeing there, you uh, that's where you didn't shift the signal, but maybe you have done that uh, in the coming cells, maybe. But you should be aware of look ahead bias. Be careful about that. Okay, okay, okay. I would I, I would look into that. Thank you. Yeah. Usually, when you are trading, when you are using time bars uh, as as this is the case. Uh, you um, you usually shift the signal once for one lakh, so you don't commit the 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 look ahead bias. Okay. Usually, but you should check in your code if that's the case, or maybe you you need to shift for another uh, for two or three lakhs. Maybe that depends on your strategy. Okay, okay. That is noted. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks to you. Is there anything else that you would like to to ask me, maybe? Um no, no not for now, not for my end. Cool. Yeah, and please uh, as I told you, as I told you all. In case you have questions throughout the week, I would love to. Uh, uh, Patrick has ad added me to the LinkedIn group chat. So in case yeah. you have questions, please let me know. I will be really happy to help you all. 
I'm making. What about on your side? So I was still trying to understand about different. So uh, me and Ambrose spoke uh, on last Tuesday, and I was still trying to understand. But uh, on the on the library that you mentioned, a free market, I wasn't able to pull that. So that is why I didn't try running anything on that. So the, I was still trying to figure out, uh, I don't know what the issue was, but I was not able to work on the AFRI market library that you mentioned last time. So okay. yeah, I got stuck there. Yeah. Okay. Um. Seems R Rutendo had the, the same issues. Um. But she she reached out to me, and I I was able to help her get data. So I'll be forwarding to you, the um piece of code, um I, I sent to Rutendo. So I will send it to you as well. Sorry for the background noise. Um. So I I will send you the, the piece of code that allows you to get the data. Okay. Um. One thing to say. So Oliver is joining us. And uh, Oliver doesn't have that much coding experience yet, but I think that uh, Jose, you sent us a list of courses, right? That and uh, actually, there those are links to web page mm -hmm. or books. Yes, there, correct. There is, yes, there is. Yeah, yeah. Book. I mean, you you sent us resources. Oliver, did you see those resources? Uh I did not yet. No. Wait, hold on. I thought I put them in the um in the group me in the where did i put those i put them somewhere um maybe it's in the um linkedin i can share that through the linkedin if case you would like to patrick yeah Co yes yes uh the linkedin or the group or the uh, WhatsApp, whichever is easy. I think we're all on the both, right? Oliver, you're in both the, 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 you're on both on the WhatsApp and the, the LinkedIn. Uh, I don't think I'm in the WhatsApp right now. Let me check. I think I got uh, mm. Yes, you are. Oh, I am. No, hold on. No, no, I see you. No, no, no. This is me sharing your... No, you're not. All right, let me, I'll send you the link to join the website. Okay. And then Jose, you could put either way, whichever way you think is easy, easier to um, check the group me. Um, okay. Um, so uh, to, to help a little bit, uh, Jose, Jose, I mean, to help Oliver, which concept do you think you should be focusing on when you look at machine learning? I mean, it's a big topic right now. What what are some of the key words you should be looking for? Oh, okay. So actually, um, Lopez de Blau says it, says it clearly. Uh, actually, one topic is machine learning. One topic is finance. And another complex topic is machine learning in finance. Correct. Okay. So actually, why I'm saying this, because Lopez Rappel says that machine learning in finance has some special nuances that uh, other cross-section, that cross-sectional data doesn't have. So you sh should be aware of time series variables, which have another type of treatment. So for example, uh, whenever you backtest a strategy with uh, cross-validation, you can't, uh, get random uh, observations through replace with replacement why because if you check if you use random subsamples with replacement in a time series data you will commit you will be using for example uh data from the future and then from the past so that's wrong so you have to be careful about that so actually what i would suggest is to check uh the lopez de prado 2018 book uh, to read that book in order to understand what you could possibly do about machine learning in finance. So that's a, like a very basic book uh, to to start with. So that's yeah. what I would suggest. Because actually, 
Ah uh, yes, advances in my financial machine learning. Let me let me share that the advances in financial machine learning. Let me put the link of the book in Amazon. Let me write it in the chat. And uh, while you're doing that, Ambrose, the idea also is, I mean, what, what is the goal here, right? I, I seen that you're, you're putting some interesting posting in LinkedIn, which is great. Ultimately, though, I think we should put a paper together. Um, not, not, not a, um, a peer reviewed, but, but, you know, a document that could be used like a, 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 a trade, right? Yeah. Um, maybe Jose knows a certain publication that always publish articles on, on, um, on machine learning and things like that, that we could use. Uh, I mean, we certainly could post it on the website for the, at the school, at the university, uh, the places like that. But if you could, that would be nice because it give, it would give you some mileage, right? That you you put this document together. I mean, you'll learn a bunch of things, which is okay. But at the one at the end of the day, if Emid is looking for a job in the fall, you know, and he says, uh, "Please refer." This is the stuff. The stuff that I've worked on. It's much more powerful than a resume or anything like that. Yeah. 